What's up guys, Randis Reviews here with you again. And today we're gonna to be talking World War II surplus Greek eight millimeter Mauser ammo, which just so happens to be some of the least expensive surplus firearms ammo available on today's market. Now, fairly recently, I've released one of my Milserp Minute videos, the subject of which was this ammunition. And I was advising caution against this Greek eight millimeter Mauser because I was experiencing failure to fires in one of my rifles. After posting that video, the comments were full of people suggesting that I dig in a little bit deeper and give the ammo another try because they had better luck with the same ammunition. When the community talks, I listen. And so now we're going to put this very inexpensive Milserp ammo to the test to see if it's actually worth picking up. Before we do so, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like seeing military surplus firearm content on YouTube, including ammo reviews, and subscribe to the channel to catch all of my future videos. Now let's take it on over to the desk for a closer look. Now this Greek 8mm Mauser is available in abundance at the moment here in the United States and it's my understanding that it was imported along with that giant cache of World War II surplus ammo that came into the country last year. For the most part this ammo was produced in the late 30s and early 40s. As we can see here the boxes I have are stamped 1940. 20 rounds per box, 7 9mm which 792 is 8 millimeter, but they're the same thing in this case. I can only imagine then that that SS probably designates that these are a Spitzer cartridge. And PCH is our head stamp, which to my understanding is a Greek export head stamp. Now when we open these boxes up, we see something a little bit different. On the ammunition itself, it is head stamped PCH, but the date is 1939. So the ammo was made in 39 and perhaps packaged in 1940, supposedly for export purposes. I can only imagine that if the Greeks were loading eight millimeter for export, that was probably going to Nazi Germany. The ammo itself is a little bit dusty and dirty. From all the examples I've looked at, you can see some of that black crud rubbing off of my hands, but there's no real corrosion or anything to speak of. Just some dust, most likely coming from the box boxes. They do have a black primer sealant. It has a brass case with a bi-metal, full metal jacket, Spitzer projectile. These are advertised as being 198 grain, but I would suspect there are some variants in the given weight of any projectile, probably somewhere between 196 and 198. Every one of these bullets that I have inspected, upon shaking, you can hear the powder rattling around. That's usually a pretty good sign that your powder is at least still dry. Let's pop one of these open and see what is inside. I didn't mention it earlier, but these do have Berdan primers. So even though they're brass case, they're not really considered reloadable. We have a square flake powder that looks to be very clean. And there is our bow-tailed Spitzer projectile. These have a bi-metal jacket, so the bullets do pull a magnet, but they are lead core. I did chronograph a couple rounds of this ammo so we can see what the velocity is looking like. I shot a couple more off camera and it seemed like they were averaging between 24 and 2500 FPS for the most part. Basically what you would expect from a 198 grain projectile. In my Milsert Minute video, where I advised against buying this particular ammo, I was using a Spanish M1943 Mauser. Apparently the firing pin spring on that particular rifle isn't quite hard enough to reliably detonate the primers on this ammo because of my most recent range trip when I decided to test this ammo once more. Out of two full boxes, so 40 rounds of ammo, I had 100% reliability out of two rifles, a Yugoslavian M2440, and a Czech DZ-24. No hang fires, no failure to fires. I did encounter a couple feeding and extraction issues, and so I think the rim on these cases might be a little bit smaller than your standard 8mm Mauser spec, but the ammo still functioned quite well. Just for fun, let's see if we can get this old flake powder to ignite. Oh yeah, it's quite the flame. It doesn't exactly burn clean, but it most certainly burns. I say we get a better look at that lead core. That's a pretty decent looking cross section. It's still too hot to touch, but we can see the metal for the jacket and that all lead core on the inside. Pretty interesting in my opinion. Now, as I said, 
When I took this back to the range, I shot two full boxes of ammo. And out of those two boxes, I did shoot a couple groups for accuracy. We're gonna take a look at that right now. These groups were shot prone at a 50 yard distance. This is a rather small target for 50 yards, for my eyes especially. So finding a point of aim was difficult from time to time. For size reference, that's an eight millimeter cartridge. So that gives you an idea of how big the target is. I'm trying to hit at 50 yards. Now as a control, I always shoot a PPU group. These groups were shot with my Yugo M2447, which has turned out to be a very nice shooting rifle. Now I did experience a little bit of vertical stringing in this group. I attribute that to the shooter and not the ammo or the rifle. So it looks like at 50 yards, that PPU group was 2.63 inches vertically, about as good as I can shoot with the state that my eyes are in. I then went on to shoot this three shot group of the Greek ammunition. It was high of the target, but that three shot group is coming in at roughly 3.18 inches and it's about two inches high of the bullseye. I shot another three shot group on this target. Close the distance on this one a little bit. It is high and left, but it's only just over an inch high. This was my best group, 1.63 inches at 50 yards. Again, that's about as good as I can shoot, especially with iron sights on a rifle built for military use. And the last group that I did was a five shot group. Again, it was high, about two inches, and the spread on this group widened up quite a bit at around three inches in that direction and about the same the other way. So about a three inch group. Now our groups are consistently high at 50 yards. I don't blame that on the ammo one bit. I blame that on the rifle because the battle site on that particular rifle is 200 meters. So it would only make sense that it would be shooting high at 50 yards. So the accuracy for the Greek 8mm is certainly a pass in my book. So I want to say a big thank you to you guys for suggesting that I give this Greek 8mm another try. I think in this instance I was most certainly too quick to judge. I said as much in that short video, admitting that my sample size of only five rounds was a very small one, but I'm glad we were able to go a little bit more in depth with this video and really redeem what in my opinion is some pretty solid surplus ammo. I believe it was Century Arms that was the importer of this ammunition. It is available all over the place right now. I've seen it on Center Fire Systems, on Century Arms, of course, and on Victory Arms and Munitions website, just to name a few, but it's definitely out there in quantity as well. And the price on this is coming in at right around 50 cents a round, which in today's market is sadly a really good price. It hurts to admit it, but if you can pull the trigger on a Milsurp rifle in 2022 for less than a dollar, you're doing pretty good. I do want to leave you with a big warning though. This ammunition is most certainly corrosive. So if you choose to shoot this in your rifle, be very diligent in your cleaning routine so you do not ruin your bore with rust. I recommend a strict bore cleaning regimen after shooting any military surplus ammunition that you are not 100% sure that it is non-corrosive, especially when we're talking about stuff that's more than 60 years old. And in the case of this ammunition, more like 80 years old. So in my opinion, Greek eight millimeter Mauser has been redeemed. I plan on picking up some more of this myself, but always keep in mind that from batch to batch, the quality of Millsurf ammo can vary based on many factors, the biggest of which would be storage conditions. So I'm not guaranteeing that it's all great, but certainly worth a try in my opinion. Thanks so much for watching guys. I truly appreciate each and every viewer out there. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up. That really helps the channel out with that Google algorithm. And trust me, gun content needs all the help it can get on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel to catch all my future videos on Millsurp firearms and Millsurp ammunition. If you know someone else that might find this video helpful, please be sure to share it because that is the best way to help me grow the channel. And I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.